Yeah. Many churches, one faith. Oh, I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> started here today. We're going to make history. We want to thank, absolutely thank, Assemblymember Wicks for getting it started last year with 2011. Yeah. Yeah. But that was just the start. Yeah. Today we are here for SB 423 and SB 4 because California needs housing now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a phone call this morning from a reporter. They said, Ron, the Carpenter's still gonna be out there? I said, of course the Carpenter's will be out there. We will not stop until housing is built in California. We will not stop until we protect all workers. We will not stop until we organize. So let's organize together. Yeah! We have a great list of speakers here today. We're going to get started with a prayer. I would like to welcome both Reverend Bussy and Reverend Hoover. Uh, they're going to come in with a prayer. Thank you very much for being here. I think they're right behind you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Let us pray. In the name of the one who is called by many names, the best of which is love. We gather here from every county in this state, from every neighborhood in every county, for a common cause, because we all deserve to have safe and affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And so we stand in solidarity with the one who is love, because our hearts ache when we think of our siblings sleeping on the streets and in doorways and on sidewalks, because land sits vacant instead of being developed, eating from garbage cans and having nowhere to take a shower or even use the bathroom. Our hearts ache when we think of our siblings living in unhealthy, substandard conditions in the richest country in the world and in the richest state in the Union, this should not be so. And so today we pray that the California legislature would see with the eyes of love and hear with the ears of love and act in a way that is consistent with love. We are grateful for those who are shepherding Senate Bills 4 and 423 through this process. We pray with confidence in the one who is love that this bill will become law and that the community of faith working with local governments will commit to creating the safe, affordable housing this state so de desperately needs. May our common purpose cause this to be so. Let us in unity say, Amen. Amen. Well, I heard that if it's really important, you should always pray twice. So, there we go. so I, I'm Reverend Zachary Hoover. I'm the executive director of LA Voice, 
and uh, we work with congregations all across LA County, and we're proud to be members of Pico, California. Let's give it up for Pico, California. Yeah. I'm really glad to be here with friends who understand that uh, the situation as it is, well, it doesn't have to be this way. So in whatever way is meaningful for you, I would invite you to pray with me. While you, Creator, are our ultimate home, our beginning, our middle, and our end, you promise to always dwell in us and amongst us. We also believe that you want all of us to be safe and secure in a place called home. We believe that we are responsible for ourselves and for each other. God, we understand that to be called home, a dwelling must be within our means. We understand that many of our faith homes have an abundance of land and a desire to use it to serve the people with housing that is within their means, that what once was shall no longer be. We understand the need to make way for homes by remembering that home is sacred. Say it with me, home is sacred. Home is sacred. Home is sacred. Policies that impede our ability to live lives of dignity and abundance hold no special sacredness. Home is sacred. Say it with me, home is sacred. Home, home is sacred. sacred. Home is where we dwell, where we love, where we play, and where we grow because, and because every one of us is a sacred creation. May home be sacred and may our sacred spaces become homes for your people. Until we return home to you, may each of us one here know, you lo know your love and live it out with our neighbors in words and in deed. God bless those who build. Amen. 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 God bless those who dwell. Amen. 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 And may your Holy Spirit move us closer to that day when all have a secure, stable home. Amen. Our hearts be on fire, Lord, to do your good around us. And if you see fit, we ask a blessing on the passage of this bill with ease and haste. And all who agreed said amen. Amen. circumstances so we are blessed and thank you for those prayers uh oh you're you're back yeah so um i do want to thank senator wiener and his compatriot assemblywoman buffy wicks for being absolute champions for working people yeah. Yeah. such a perfect time to actually have this rally. The inability to have working, uh, you know, working family housing, the, the affordability problem. So it's just the fight that needs to be had. Uh, I also want to tell you, this is in, on behalf of the partners that are here and the leadership here. They represent about 60,000 partners that are behind us all the way. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Sent them, somebody needs to. There are hundreds of thousands of housing construction workers, men and women, women in the housing construction industry, work under the worst conditions, suffer the highest wage theft, and receive the lowest wage in the industry. So I want to thank the <coughs> Senator and Assemblywoman for ensuring that your bills include prevailing wages for those who work building the housing. That will give them the ability, perhaps, to live in the affordable housing or maybe even own a house, affordable house, that they're actually building. That changes the nature of the, old, you know, the blue collar, middle class question or working class question. I also want to thank you for making sure that you put the security of health care for the families of those working people. That does so much to raising a family. And I saw some little children around here, amazing, uh, in this, this day. But without health care, a pretty good salary gets you nowhere with one minor problem. Uh, also, very importantly, uh, for including the ability, and a new and more powerful ability to enforce the law. 
And that's something that we here uh, understand very, very well. The labor management programs that represent working people will have the ability to afford uh, enforce this new law in a way that um, is not being done now. So really, I basically want to say thank you for helping to restore the anchor of a healthy society, which is basically a healthy blue collar working class that has the ability to live in a community, that has the resources to spend money in a community. Our cities, our major urban communities are being decimated because of the problems faced today, but number one, housing, number two, the lack of increase in, in, in wages, et cetera. Um, so lastly, I want to thank you for giving the Carpenters Union and any other union that is so inclined to do what it is supposed to do, which is protect its members and organize the unorganized. Yeah. Woo! Four, SB 423. Let's give him some love, Senator Scott Weiner. Let's make this a tall person, Mike. <laughs> so, first of all, I just want to say to the Carpenters, yeah. from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Yeah. 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 Woo! Thank you for everything you do to support working people. All up and down this state, uh, and thank you for the housing issue, for deeply engaging and putting your money and your people power where your mouth is. Uh, if you want to be in a foxhole with, with people, it's the carpenters. Yeah. But, but speaking of foxholes, speaking of foxholes, the other two people you want to be in are my colleagues, Assemblymember Bucky Wicks yeah. and Tina McKinnon. Yeah. They are here, so thank you so much for, for being here and for being part of this team. So people sometimes ask me, uh, I've taken a lot of you know, hits and abuse over the years for my work on housing, and I have colleagues who tell me, like, my constituents know who you are, and they're really mad at you for your housing work. And people say to me, why, why do you do this? Just, it's so, housing is so hard, and housing politics can be toxic, and why do you do this and, and, get, and get beaten up and potentially lose some votes? I do it because this is the thing that matters for the future of California. Yeah. Yeah. I do it because I am sick and tired of the fact that, that thousands of school children in San Francisco Unified School District wake up every morning homeless. Thousands of school children in LAUSD, it's much higher. We have children going to school every day who are waking up in homeless shelters or in cars and their parents are keeping it together and getting ready and dropping their kids dropping their kids off and then going to work. And they're doing that because we force them to do that. Right, yeah. right. They're doing they're doing that because we have made policy decisions to say that housing isn't important. That it's more important for people to have views or to like the look and feel of their neighborhood than it is for those children to have housing. And that is not acceptable and we should not be doing that anymore. Yeah. Because I am sick in my own community in San Francisco. If I have to hear again, as I do all the time, someone telling me, I love San Francisco, I've lived here for 15 years, we had our second kid, we're out of here, we're moving to Denver, or we're moving to Austin or somewhere else, but we, because we cannot imagine a future where we can afford housing for our growing family. I am sick of hearing from young people telling me, I want to be here, I don't see a future for myself in this community because there's no way that I'm ever gonna have housing for the long run. I don't wanna hear that anymore. And the only way we're gonna stop hearing that, the only way that we're going to help people actually stay here and survive and thrive is to build damn housing. Yeah. And that's what these bills are about. It's about are we serious? when we talk about the need for more housing and housing that is more affordable. Are we just going to complain about it and wring our hands and be angry no. that people are living on our streets, that working families are moving out, that we're losing our diversity? 
Are we just going to be pissed off about it? No. Or, are we, or are we going to do something about it? Yeah. And these bills are going to help move in that direction. We know that we have tens of thousands of acres of land that religious institutions in this state have that could become affordable housing. And that will be a game changer if we can open up that land for affordable housing. And we know that SB 35 has generated, in San Francisco alone, 3,000 new affordable homes and we know that it's going to generate, if we are able to keep it alive and not let it expire, that's what 423 is about, it's going to generate tens of thousands of new homes up and down the state. So it is time, it is time to keep this momentum moving forward. Let's get these two bills passed. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. So we are having a bit of a microphone issue right now, obviously. We're, we're packing here. It's wireless. I have a wire mic coming up. Uh, I'm hoping it's coming up right now before we get our next speaker. Here it is. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, uh, our next speaker up needs no introduction, but I am honored to be up here to introduce her. Our assembly member, Buffy Wicks. SB4. I've been working on SB4 from LA Voice. I used to work 
worked for Reverend Zach Hoover in my other career, and we were working on SB4. Look, my name is Assembly Member Tina McKenna, and I'm not here for the bullshit. Come on. After that, we have red tape, we have lawsuits, we have delays. You heard about three years right here. Uh, I've heard a lot worse, and we can't keep going with it. And that's why we're supporting bills like SB4 and SB423, because they let us do our job of building housing, and they let you do your job of building housing as well. We can build the housing we need, and we can put people back to work. And I'll tell you right now, SB4, as some of our said, is not a new idea. This is our third time trying to pass this bill. Our third time trying to pass an affordable housing bill in the middle of an affordable housing crisis. And you might ask me, what's different this time? What's changed? And I will tell you, this time we're not fighting alone. This time we're here with new partners. This time we're here with the California Carpenters. Yeah! We're here with the faith community. Because we're tired of the housing crisis. Yes. The rent is too high. There are too many. And we're also here because we believe we can make a difference. We know we can make a change. We think the California dream is still alive if we just take housing and we write this shit. So we have the biggest housing coalition I've ever seen. We have 180 organizations in support of Senate Bill 4. Yeah. Woo! Are you ready to fight? Yeah! Are you ready to build? Yeah! This might be our third time running this bill, but with us together, it's going to be the last time we run this bill. Yeah! Thank you all so much. Thank you for having us. And I'm so happy to introduce Jenny here. Jenny Smith is going to take over. States. Attempts to build millions of new homes in California will not succeed unless we raise the pay of those who build housing. Yeah. 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 Our employers recognize that you can't attract high quality workers 
with low wages and no health or retirement benefits. CEA strongly supports SB 423, All right. as we've discussed extending California's housing streamlining bill, SB 35, as well as SB 4, the Affordable Housing on Faith Lands Act. We support it because it will help solve California's tremendous housing needs while benefiting contractors that believe in a fair day's wage for a fair day's work. Too many of our housing co competitors attempt to win work on the backs of workers, oftentimes in violation of labor laws. CEA rejects business practices that hold workers back and cost legitimate businesses and taxpayers money. Good quality jobs are at the center of CEA contractors' business models. Contractors need a strong, stable, and skilled workforce to deliver homes, offices, schools, and hospitals. Skilled workers don't just fall out of trees when contractors need them. In partnership with the Carpenters Union, yeah! we and good wages and benefits. Right. Yeah. SB 423 and SB 4 will create paths to many more homes and good jobs. Shoulder to shoulder with the Carpenters Union, the Construction right. yeah. Employers Association is striving to help create a thriving future for the people and the businesses in California. It's my pleasure to introduce Madi Manji of Inner City Law. and I'm the Director of Public Policy for Inner City Law Center. We're a skid row pro bono law firm and we serve folks who are facing homelessness and are risk of homelessness throughout LA County. As we talk about Senate Bill 4 and Senate Bill 423, I would like us to reflect about the crisis we find ourselves in. Today, 115,000 people in California will sleep outside in this rainy, windy weather. 48,000 people in Los Angeles County alone will be sleeping on the street. And 1.2 million households throughout California struggle to balance the cost of rent and the cost of transportation and food. But more than the statistics, what matters is the story. The pain and fear that a parent feels not knowing where their children will sleep tonight. The thousands of individuals who strive to achieve their dreams but struggle without a place to shower. Our housing crisis is a moral failure. In the fifth largest economy in the world where so many have so much, how have we allowed so many of our neighbors to be forced to sleep on the cold concrete? Yeah. Right. The biggest barrier to ending home homelessness is the lack of affordable housing. Yeah. 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 Only housing ends homelessness. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Woo. If housing is a human right, we must build enough housing for all of our neighbors. Yeah. 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 We talk about housing dancers often not here. You know, they're worried about parking, they're worried about traffic. But if housing is a human right, we must prioritize housing and we must ensure housing for all. Yeah. Inner City Law Center, we're proud to stand with Senator Wiener, with Buffy Wicks, uh, with Tina McKinner, with the Carpenters. Yeah. Yeah. to continue the streamlining of affordable and mixed income projects and to create new housing opportunities. If housing is a human right, affordable housing and mixed income housing needs to be screened. And we have to pass SB4 and SB423. Yeah. 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 I have the pleasure now to do with Jay Bracho. Union is proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with you, and we know you are on the front lines with the largest groups of California really suffering from what's going on with the unhoused crisis. So we want to thank you as an organization for all the work you do. And we know you support us already, and we're trying to address the same thing. I'm honored to serve as the Executive Secretary Treasurer of the NorCal Carpenters Union. And what I want to focus on today 
is what's going on with the workforce in residential housing. Right now, there's 300,000 unorganized, almost 100% Latino new immigrant workers doing wood frame residential. And this is no exaggeration that the economic conditions for those workers and the business model of those contractors building that housing in the private arena is a crime scene. Yeah. Yeah. But it touches everyone in the community. As we look at resources to help those who are suffering the most in our state, we subsidized that crime scene, being conservative, $3.5 billion last year in social welfare programs for workers who are working every single day. There's been $1.5 billion lost in tax revenue because of that crime scene. But it's really what it looks like for the blood and the bone of those workers every day being exploited. The Carpenters Union number one mandate, if you crack the constitution of our organization for more than a hundred years, it says the number one object of our organization is to organize the non-union workers. Woo! To yeah. break Woo! down the division yeah. Yeah. between the unionized workers and the non-union, to put the hand out and pull up, and most importantly to give those workers the power to pull themselves up. Yeah. And that's what this is about. As with any fight that is worth a damn, there is misinformation. The bottom line is 300,000 workers left out. We say enough is enough. We say we will not compromise on any legislation that is going to lock out Latino workers in the construction industry. Are you with me? Yeah! So the bottom line, when you look at it right now, construction workforces, we have to grow at a minimum of 80,000 workers year over year over year. We need those 300,000 workers building residential. It sure. will create opportunity for legitimate contractors to compete in that arena, not competing against crime scenes, and it will create thousands upon thousands of union jobs, just like SB 35 has done in the affordable arena. We're saying take that model, put it in the private mixed income side, and let's build millions of housing units, and let's create thousands of union jobs. Those workers are welcome in our organization, and any organization, union or not, that claims it's anything else but that, it's a lie. We say step shoulder to shoulder with us. We say remember those workers are our brothers and sisters. Let's pull up together. Let's build housing. Let's fix the problem in our state. And let's remember those who are the most exploited and are hurting in our state. Let's organize and let's get it done. We're proud to be here today. Okay, this, I'm very excited. It is really my honor and pleasure uh, to introduce the Executive Secretary Treasurer for the Southwest Mountain States Regional Council of Carpenters and also our Western Vice President, Pete Rodriguez. Bradshaw here is a power within power. California housing and the people of California straight across the board. There's a labor leader standing amongst us here and his name is Jake. When the history books get put together and they say, hey man, things were done in 2021, 2022, and 2023, come rain, Come shine, the carpenters were there. Yeah! yeah. And, uh, you know, and guess what? The carpenters ain't made of sugar. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. We're ready to work, we're ready to compete, and I'll be damned, we're ready to organize. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm speaking today on behalf of the Southwest Carpenters 
that represents over 68,000 uh, carpenters and then some belly buttons. Yeah. In Los Angeles, in the county, the median price of a home exceeds over 700 k That's a 17% increase in a single year. The working people alone are being pushed further and further outside of the workspace, which means they're spending a bunch of time looking at their uh, windows, at the windshields. And it's getting worse every single day. That means there's less uh, little league coaches and a whole lot of people uh, looking uh, outside thinking about what they're going to do tomorrow to put make ends meet. And you know what? Status quo doesn't make the cut anymore. And that's right. why we have two bills today, SB4, SB 423, that cuts through the red tape, makes it easier to build affordable housing, and puts hardworking union members to work. That's right. right. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Make no mistake about it, SB 4, and write this down, <laughs> SB 4, <laughs> SB 423 are two bills that are union bills. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a union bill, it's full of shit. That's right! Yeah. Both bills require strong labor and health care standards, ensuring workers can have their share of the California dream. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to slow it down a little bit more. How appropriate is it that we have the church in the house today? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was a carpenter. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been the church when the hat gets passed around, and we all want to share that tradition, and we all want to get back to the, to the place that we, we can share and, and, and we, we pray to the, to the Lord up above. And we want to make sure that we pass that tradition on to our children. Not only is there carpenters there, but there's different trades, different folks uh, within our community, construction workers, all are people of faith. And it's important to understand whether you pull out a $5 bill, a $1 bill, or a $20 bill, we want to make sure that we pass that tradition on to our children and we let them know what it means to give back yep. to our community and to our church. It's important that we don't have to make a decision that day on whether we give back to our church and to our community and or go and have a nice breakfast. That's right. When we build housing, we shouldn't have to make a choice on whether we give back to our community or go have a nice breakfast. Yeah. I should be able to go to church, give back to my community, give back to the place where I, I pray, and still be able to go large with my pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's on behalf of all California construction workers. That's right. Yeah. 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 Nice. We're pro housing, we're pro worker, pro union, and we're pro California. Yeah. 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 Let's get to work. Yeah. 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 What do we want? Housing. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Housing. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Housing. When do we want it? Now. NorCal Carpenters Union and Southwest Mountain States Regional Council. We want to thank everyone for being here. Yeah. The Carpenters invite everyone as we march over to the swing space. We want to hear you loud. We want to hear you proud. We want you to tell those legislators up there, don't stop housing. The Carpenters are here to house. The Carpenters are here to build. The Carpenters are here to organize. And the Carpenters are here to bring everyone up. Let's go tell those legislators, let's build housing in California. Thank you very much. Thank you. Woo! Are you seeing DS? We're going to do a picture. Hey, hey. Oh, it's very hard. I often have to They really do it. They really do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was SB4.
for an SV 423. Sneak out. No, we don't have speakers. Still raining. <laughs> so that was SV 423 and um, SV4. Um, both great bills. SB 423 extends um, the bill that we passed a few years ago, SB 35, uh, that's set to expire um, and does some cleanup on that bill as well. And also SB 4, which adds um, a new provision that allows for uh, places that are zoned for churches to add additional housing on top of their excess space that they have. So we're here with the carpenters today, uh, enjoying a very rainy day in the Capitol. Right behind me is... San Francisco Capitol in about um, at 1.30. I'm headed over there to speak in the Senate committee to call for that Senate committee on housing to uh, support this bill. So in a few minutes, we're probably all going to head over there um, and call for all the senators to support this bill as we try to usher it through this legislative session and get it passed. Um, but this is one of the big things and a lot of our communities um, one of the things that we're trying to do is infill housing. So we're trying to add housing to existing communities that we have and these churches, they have a lot of extra space a lot of times. Sometimes they have giant parking lots that you don't need anymore. And those are perfect places to add housing, but right now it's not legal to do that. So that's one of the things that we're working on with this bill, um, which is great because it'll, it'll add housing in our high resource areas. A lot of people are already walking over right now. And uh, this is just... <laughs> <laughs> amazing coalition of people coming together um, so we have uh, housing action people we have the carpenters here and uh, yeah this is a, a big deal to kind of coordinate and, and regardless of rain it is pouring here and we're here we're showing up to fight for these bills because they need to pass so anyways thank you very much I'll probably go live later again once I'm on the Senate floor and uh, or Senate committee not the floor uh, supporting this bill so thank you for watching and uh, have a good one.